Let's read together from Luke chapter 7. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet, but she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You ne neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, the sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But the person who is forgiven little shows only little love. And Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Has anyone ever told you you're a bit needy? Well, <clears throat> if nobody ever told you, I don't know you that well, and perhaps I don't want to overstep a boundary here, but somebody's got to tell you, you are a very needy person. Good news, we are all very needy. That's the way we create it. With a lot of needs inside of us. That's got to be fulfilled. Otherwise, we can't live. And we have desires. And we have wishes. And with good enough parenting, you will receive a mother tongue which would enable you to express some of those needs within you. Your parents would first help you through mirroring by making you aware of your hunger, your hurt, your pain, um, your need to sleep, whatever. But they will also teach you that you can't just act on every desire and need that you experience. You've got to learn to say no to some of them. Just for the sake of um, delayed gratification. It's not that they are wrong. It's not wrong that you would like a chocolate cake now. But it's not good for you. So you've got to learn to wait. And for some of those desires that you've, had, you've got, you've got to learn to say no forever. Because it would hurt you and it would hurt the people around you. You've got to find a way of, of either getting rid of it, and sometimes you can't, to live with it in a way. If you become a follower of Jesus, you would immediately find him along your side on this journey. That's one of his big invitations. Is come with me, but go on an inner journey. I'll be there with you. He would help you to discern amongst all the desires that you have. What is good, what is not so good, what's bad. He would give you the power. But he will help you to get in touch with your deepest desires. And teach you how to live from that place. And the story that we're looking at, we see two seekers. We're introduced to two seekers coming to Jesus. Both were very sincere and bold in coming to Jesus. They were at a place in their lives where they just wanted to know, um, is he the one that might help me? Because there's more to life than what I'm experiencing at this moment. You know, then years ago, I, would, I would thought that as long as you're sincere and as long as you seek, everything's okay. But in this story, it becomes clear that you can be sincerely wrong. 
And perhaps it does matter how you seek. Because one of them find and the other one does not find. Simon, a very wealthy, well-respected citizen of the town, did not find. He was a Pharisee. And um, then there's this woman, we don't know her name, but she's a woman of the city, meaning she's a sex worker. They both came to Jesus, and she found what she was looking for. And Jesus turned to Simon and said, Simon, look at her. Look at the way that she searched. And that's the way that you should search me. Well, first of all, she searches with her whole heart. She wept. She kissed. She broke the perfume and washed his feet, dried it with her hair. It's a, a very passionate, whole person involved. You know, you've got a heart. And your heart, not your physical heart, but your heart is a place within you, in your body, where all the functions that you have come together. You could say that's, that's the center of your life, your imagination, your longing, your memory, your reason, whatever ability and function you have comes together at one place. She found that place. Um, it's a lot of us are cut off from our hearts. We haven't found our hearts yet. We live like Simon in our heads. And what she found is that there's something wrong with her heart and she couldn't fix it. There was something missing. But in spite of that, she came with passion, with emotion. And she was totally open to, 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 to hear from Christ, whatever he says, whatever he wants, she was looking for a connection and for a relationship. Simon was in his head. He looked at what was happening and he said, um, I'm not sure whether he could be a prophet. Now, he, he cannot even uh, discern what type of woman this is. And of course, the thinking of the day was to not touch a person like that, not to have any contact with a person like that. So Simon has an impersonal approach. He knows what he needs and he knows how, how things should. He's closed. And Christ actually through what he's saying, he's saying that I'm not looking for right and good. And I'm looking for openness. I'm looking for relationship. I'm looking for passion. I look for, I'm looking for a kiss, for tears. That's what I'm looking for. She came and searched with vulnerability. So what does it mean to be vulnerable? Perhaps it means to risk makes, making something very valuable to you known to somebody else. It's a risk because you're uncertain of the reaction. You can trust that that person would not reject you because of what you reveal and what you say and make known about yourself that's in your inside. Just by crying, you know, by letting her hair down, was becoming very, very vulnerable and kissing his feet. You know, it, it, that type of behavior were re really not allowed, appropriate in a public space. If she was married, uh, her husband could have divorced her by, because of what she did. But for Christ, this was not an erotic moment. For him, it was the opening up 
of a self, making known what's in who she is and what's on her inside. Simon stays in his head. He doesn't say a thing. He's just looking at, um, still evaluating it. What's going on here? Can he help me? Can't he help me? The third thing that this woman did was, was totally devoted herself to Christ. She surrendered. She anointed his feet with a rare perfume. So it was the custom that women would wear a necklace around their neck with a little bottle of perfume. Um, it would be part of a dress-up to, to look beautiful, but the oil, once the bottle was opened up, was also to release a, a smell to make her even more attractive. Only rich women could afford perfume and wear that. So she, she had a, made a lot of money. And she opened up that bottle. And by doing that, she actually were giving up the only power and the leverage that she had, you know, which was her sensuality. And say, this is who I am. This is what I've got. And she gave it to Christ. Simon, still very hesitant. No involvement. And she received. She received three wonderful gifts by doing that. First of all, wholeness. Jesus said, your faith has saved you. Other translations, healed you or made you whole. That's what that Greek word meant. There was a different word used for physical healing. So there was nothing wrong physically with her. But she was divided. There was a lot of splitting in her life. Now, um, fragmented, compartmentalized. Parts of her life did not connect with other parts in her life. Now, and and, um, and and in her case, there was a separation between her sexuality and her spirituality. I remember once speaking to a sex worker that came to me after a service and said she's been attending um, the services for some while and um, she doesn't think it really helps her, it upsets her because it brings her in touch with a deep pain and the divide that she's living with. Because what she's doing is to earn money as much as she can. And she said, I've got no education. I've got a little daughter. I'm all by myself. And I want to give her a better life. And, I, and the only thing that I have is my body. I'm attractive. Um, I'm a nine out of ten on the essential scale. And that's what I can use. But to be a mother during the day, being with my child, and then living this life at night kills me. And I know it's wrong, but I feel it's in a sense good as well because I'm trying to do something good. But can you help me? How do I get rid of this guilt, this Stress that I'm living with. And that's the problem with splitting. And of course, sexuality is a big issue in the Western world. You know, 25% of all the activity on the internet has to do with pornography. It's a big thing in the Western mind. And sometimes it's, it's, it's just a part of my life. If we can, we split in many ways, finances, you know, um, and we're invited as long as we live a divided life. Uh, there, there, there won't be integrity in our lives. And it, it, it causes a lot of hurt and pain in our lives. And that's why we're invited to bring it together. 
Now, Freud perhaps was the first guy that said that um, spirituality is actually repressed sexuality. But in this story, it looks as exactly the other way around, that this woman's sexuality was actually repressed spirituality. The moment she brought it out into the light and she brought it to Christ, she was made whole. A life was brought together. The next thing was love, the capacity to love. Uh, many sins have been forgiven. That's why you can, that's why you have much love. There's a, di- there's a direct link between the, the, uh, the, the sins and the amount of sins and the capability to love. Um, she had a lot of sins. That's why she could love, love a lot. Now, Jesus spoke to Simon and told him a story. Remember, he's in his head. And Christ meets him where he is. But he uses a story, and it's, it, it looks as if story might have that ability to take us out of our heads. Because with a story, you've got to start using your imagination. And with a story, you've got to start connecting your story, your life, to the facts and the ideas put forward through the story. And Jesus said there was a man um, where there were two people that owed him money. The one 5,000, the other one 5 million. He wrote it off. I said, you don't have to pay me anymore anything. You don't owe me anything anymore. Now, who would love the most? And the guy said, of course, the guy who's been forgiven of five million. And he said, you're right. This woman realizes the amount of debt that she had. And that's a problem with religious people, with us who are religious. We think and feel, but we're not that bad. We don't do things like that. And we are blind to the fact that we are dead. Dead was the word that used, we are cut off. It's what it's literally mean. And Paul says, I was dead and Christ made me alive. And it doesn't matter whether you're a little dead or a lot dead, you're dead. And so, yes, the invitation from Christ to really get in touch with our brokenness, to realize the nature and the fact that we can't save ourselves, we can't heal our hearts. We, you are blessed when you're at the end of your rope, Jesus said. You are blessed when you've come to the end of yourself and you realize it's only him. It's at that moment that you can receive love and experience the love and then you can be love. You can give love. The last thing she received the mission, go in peace and literally go into the peace. He's the God of peace. Now go live with him. Live in this new place. Peace. You know, uh, uh, that peace that passes understanding. Give that peace. Bring that peace. It's as, it's as if Jesus gave her a new identity. And he replaced and gave her a place in the community. And he said, she's part of this community. Now go and live that way. I don't know where you are or whether you in touch with the fact that you're a seeker. Do you intentionally go on an inward journey? Do you try just to look what's going on inside of me? My desires. You know, where there's other philosophies in life that say and think that desires are the reason for all the problems that we have in life. And we've got to rid ourselves of all desires. Then we'll never be disappointed and we will transcend above 
all bad things that happened and we won't suffer in life anymore. But the Christian way and the life with Christ is different. It's an invitation to discover your desires, to order your desires, to get a, a rid of disordered desires, but then to reach the place where you discover the deepest desires in your life and to live from that place because they are there put by God. And that's the journey. It's a journey that will take you to oneness, to love, to peace. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the life that you've given us. And help us, Lord, to seek you with all our hearts, to become vulnerable, to share our heart with you, just as it is. Help us to surrender completely to you, to receive this new life and to go on this journey to become more whole, to become more lovable, and to live in peace and to give peace and be peace. We thank you for that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord and go in peace. May the love of God the Father, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. 